Welcome to the Backyard Farm. All right, Lydia. You know what we should talk about today? Storing seeds, because seeds are where the garden starts. And I'm really excited about seeds this year. You know why? Because we got a bunch of new seeds. But if we don't store them correctly, then they could potentially go bad. My preferred pro tip for seed storage is as long as they're in a flat temperature, flat humidity, and out of light, I think that that's a really good place. Preferably 60, 65 degrees or lower in temperature, and preferably 30% humidity or lower. That's really easy to do here in Colorado. I actually store all of my seeds in my safe, which is in my garage. My garage stays very flat, pretty cold, and zero humidity all year long. So I think that that's a great spot. But inside my safe, I also store them in a few different techniques. So I used to store all of my seeds kind of like this. Just a total mess of a bunch of different seeds all blended together in an airtight Tupperware. That can be a really good method. However, if there's any moisture that gets trapped in here, it can actually be really bad because that moisture will condense and potentially get onto some of the seeds and either cause them to go bad or pre-germinate or actually end up kind of detonating the seed. I like this, but my pro tip is if you're gonna do it, pop at least a couple holes in the lid. That's the old way. Then some of the newer ways that I've been doing it is with these kind of cool, actually kids crayon or colored pencil containers. So I wanted to upgrade my seed storage method once again, and I found these. It's actually three shelves per section, and they have the little ones for the seeds that you don't have a ton of, and they have the bigger ones for the seeds that you do have a ton of, kind of like your pepper seeds or your tomato seeds. They're stackable. They don't like to move once they're stacked because they are made to nest together. I know everybody has their preference. Some people like hot, super hot. Some people like sweet. Some people like roasters. Let me know your favorite type of pepper down below. This is Lydia Marie, and she's my little seed starting helper. So Lydia, I know I said I showed you some of my seeds, but you haven't seen all of them. Do you guys want to see how many seeds I got this year? And I gotta give a shout out. Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds out of Missouri. One of the most ridiculous varieties of seeds that I've ever seen. And no, I'm not sponsored. No, I'm not affiliated. This is just me being a seed advocate. And if you guys wanna see, this is the amount of seeds that I got for the year. Holy seed land. What are we growing this year? Uh, everything? It sure looks like it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I might have bought just a couple new seeds for this year. They look delicious. Atomic orange corn. I know, oh. you wanna see one of the coolest corns? Yeah, did you see this? I'm so excited. Look at this, mm. strawberry corn. Oh, I'm gonna eat all of that. You know what they look like? They look like giant raspberries. What do you got over there, Lydia? Peppers. You got the Rewa, Filius Blue, the Italian Peppercini, and look how pretty. The Lacia, believed to be the sweetest of all peppers with the thickest flesh we have ever seen. I'm gonna start and lay out all the peppers. Found more peppers. More peppers. So you're really good at finding peppers. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. The mushroom basket tomato. What do you think of all these seeds, Lydia? That's a lot of seeds. You can either store all your seeds all at once and then go back through them and pick them all out based upon what you actually wanna grow this year. So, the next thing on our to-do list is to cherry pick some of these out based upon what we wanna grow this year and then store the rest. It's a little bit of personal preference and a little bit of what you and your environment can tolerate with growing conditions. I have had my eyes on this pepper the whole time. The king of the north pepper, the Laysa pepper, the Cubanel, oh wow, the Puma pepper? It's not as pretty as you are though. There's purple. The Habanada, you gotta grow that because the Habaneros have such amazing flavor, but 
They're too spicy most of the time, especially for you. Also grab the Zulu. Pippin's Golden Honey. That's gonna be a fun one. Do you wanna pick one more, sweetheart? Yeah, that one. This one? Yeah. The Phileas Blue. Look how pretty those are. So this is one of the next pro tips to keep it easy once your seeds are in storage. Go through, cherry pick the varieties that you've got your eye on for the year. Go ahead and put a rubber band around them. Set them aside, and now we can collect the rest of these peppers and we can put them into a more medium and long-term storage format, which I have actually chosen to do in these vertical um, shelving unit style containers, which I'm really excited about. So a question that I get asked a lot is how long can you store seeds for? One season up to maybe even 10 plus, some seeds have been in storage for hundreds of years. As long as they're in a flat temperature, a flat humidity, and with no light and direct moisture on them, they will be able to be stored for a very long time. That's kind of why this year, I just went a little bit crazy and I bought a bunch of seeds because I wanted to make sure that I've got my stuff available for future seasons. You did these, the yeah. Mizunas? Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate it. So one of the best parts of storing your seeds and organizing them like this is now, if I wanna to get to something, it's easy to get to, it's out of the way of the kids, out of the way of the dogs, the seeds aren't gonna get smashed, I can stack and store them easily into a storage area, but most importantly, if I wanna to get to them, I can get to them very easily. I got a really fun fact. Did you guys know that there's over 4,000 varieties of tomatoes? And I'm curious, what type of tomato do you guys like the most? Well, starting your tomatoes from seed will actually keep the pest and disease tolerance a lot higher because they haven't been put directly next to pests and diseases that are being controlled with pesticides and fungicides in a commercial setting. That's my number one tomato growing pro tip as well as my number one reason why you should grow from seed. All right, so now we are going to talk about one of everybody's favorite seeds to pop and that is corn. In my opinion, the white corns like the Silver Queen and the Extra Sweets are the most delicious. But it's also very fun to plant some of the old school heirloom style corn plants like this strawberry corn here. These are even fun to just put in a small container or a barrel type of garden and put it on the other side of your house and let your house be the pollen barrier and put these kind of on the patio and just have it to be a conversation piece and you do get to harvest some, but it's really just to look at. We always have to remember that all of these plants humans have been breeding with and selecting the best genetics over a long period of time. And probably a long time ago, a lot more corn looked like this, like this Hopi turquoise or Hopi blue. What is your favorite type of domesticated or bred corn? Is it white corns? Is it sweet corns that are yellow? Let us know in the comments down below. We'd love to hear your feedback. Personally, up until this year, my favorite sweet corn I've ever found has been the Silver Queen. So as you guys have seen on some of our other videos, like the Three Sisters video that we did last year, I did it all with Silver Queen. And I also had two other sweet corn varieties right next to it. I learned my lesson on starchy seeds with corn, with cross pollination, and ultimately it took me six or seven years to learn my timing of when and where to plant my corn seeds, when and where to plant my pea or bean seeds, and where and when to put my squash seeds. So make sure you go check out that Three Sisters video from last year, and we're gonna be improving on it again this year, and we're gonna be doing only one type of corn in our backyard. Let us know in the comments down below some of your pro tips. What are your preferred timing after all that time, I got all these sorted into my pile that I'm gonna pop up here, which might be unrealistic, and my pile that I'm gonna keep down here. So I've gone ahead and I've labeled all of these containers, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in here. And here 
here we are, we got our stash of everything bundled together, easy access for this year. Go check out our video from last year when we planted peas and beans and let us know your seed starting pro tips. Thank you very much. I'm Tate with Backyard Farming Supply. We appreciate the love and support. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for the daily family.